Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Side News. I'm Jeff Borg, and this could be the latest edition of the Royal Takers. Our running Royals look to double up on wins on the main Mariners after getting their first win against them of the season in a great 4-1 to victory last evening. Led by a great start by our running Royals that Trevor Gooch was able to score the first two goals of the game and almost get a hat-trick on multiple plays with Jeremy Bredore coming in for one of the best goaltenders in the league uh, is able to come in for Lakers and actually protect the <clears throat> three goals that Lakers let in in the first period and do exactly what Geit would have wanted, which I think he put him in just for the pure momentum thing, where Stefano's Lakers, the only goal he would really want back is that second one by Trevor Gooch that seemed to kind of just chip over him almost like a golf shot. But other than that, Maine just didn't play well in the first period, and I think that was a momentum shift thing. And as Kirk McDonald said in the postgame presser, Maine did look a little bit better in the second. But the Royals also, I think, did a very good job at keeping them to the outside. And as Eric Jetsberger said on the broadcast with me last night, I think they only had, a you could count on one hand, the chances that were great for Maine yesterday, which even in limiting shots this year, Kirk McDonald stressed this a lot, the Royals have at times say they've allowed 17 shots. Eight or nine of them might have been high leverage chances for the other team. So obviously you want to lesser that. Well, that's starting to really happen of late, whether it was against Trois Rivières this past weekend or against Anirondack in most of that game, other than the middle law period a little bit. And then especially in, well, not in Maine, but against Maine yesterday um, for our Reading Royals, they really did a good job at honing in defensively once they got the lead. Because with this many games and how many days they played, even more so than most seasons where it's always crunch time with a lot of games at the end of the season, this t season it's even more due to the COVID year. The Royals played, I think, a very smart game that also spells well for the playoffs. Because in the playoffs, if you get a couple goals early, you're not just going to continuously have open lanes because in the playoffs, you're playing the best opponents. And also, Maine, Maine's just been a weird roller coaster team this year because of their team 5-on-5 five five defense. Special teams has been great. Um, that's where the Royals also stressed and played very well yesterday. They didn't allow them to get on special teams. But Maine is a team that I think is actually a good team to learn from it's for going into the postseason because we're over two against them coming into yesterday we were able to beat them but they also play a structure of being a tough team to play against a lot of skill with some grit as well similar to our running royals so i think this game was a good prelude leading into the round out of the season as april 16th is the last regular season game because the royals defended a lead terrifically and darian hansen's debut who now will go back up to lehigh valley but did fantastic coming down to help us out and get a big win he was very sharp and that obviously made a save that he uh actually he said he didn't even think <clears throat> he he did get it um on the breakaway which was an absolutely beautiful save which was on robbins if i remember correctly so he was great there but he also made a couple great glove saves he looked very square to the puck in the net and he didn't look phased at all in his first pro game and that spells a lot of success for one if he comes back down with the running royals in the future or two for the dual fans that are also Lehigh Valley Phantoms fans that watch my ghostly takes for how well he could potentially do up there. And I think he does have a chance for coming out of UConn, formerly Union College, before transferring to UConn, to be a solid show goaltender at the very least. But last night, my three keys to the game were fantastic team defense, fantastic back check and four check. I'm just going to group that into one because it makes it easier. And then fantastic debut by the goaltender. Obviously, the offense was great as well, but... They got off to a good start, and also Sonia has continued to be an extra grit piece for this team, obviously stepping in there with Will McKinnon when we saw Trevor Gooch get hit later in the game, which was fantastic to see. And also Cooper and Halsinger, those two seem to have great chemistry, especially on the defense end together, being able to be the guys that got it up to, to uh, Braden Lowe for his goal. And uh, I think that's going to work out really well because both of those guys are very good on both ends, and they seem to be cutting down lanes. Therefore, giving either our defense jumping up on the play or the other forward being Ray and Low yesterday a chance to actually get an offensive play due to how good they are on defense. So all the lines are falling into place for the Royals. The Royals are starting to kind of, <clears throat> at this point, we've seen games this year where the Royals did have 
middle gap lulls. We saw that a little bit against Hannah Ronda, but they bounced back lately. That was the only game they really had it. They seem to really be coming into their own and having opportunities now that they clinch a playoff spot to rest key guys like Pritchard and Millman and then put in other guys because you picked up Kevin Conley's of the world. And we even still have, not on the active roster yet, but we'll see if he does get in the game, Zane Franklin. You have Ryan Carlson, who adds grit, didn't play a very good first game against TR on Sunday, but we'll see if he cracks the lineup again. But this team obviously is full of depth, and then they're going to have Morrison coming back fairly shortly, and then we'll see what happens with Lehigh as teams, or as guys kind of come back and forth between Lehigh and eventually maybe come back down um, if Lehigh is going to not make the playoffs. But the problem with that is, as I mentioned in a past video in conclusion for this video, their season ends the 30th, ours ends the 16th. So unless if they're sending guys down just to get into playoff hockey, if they're kind of out of it by then, that's probably the only reason they'll be down sooner rather than later. But everybody have a great, safe, pleasant day. This has been the latest edition of The Royal Take. Please make sure you subscribe down below or above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. Let's go Royals. Let's try to make it two in a row today, as it seems like Logan Flodell will be the guy back in the cage today against the main Mariners. And we'll have to see if they decide to go with Jeremy Berdour. If I'm them, I would, because he stepped in and did great. The only... Well, he didn't let in anything, because the only thing that went in when he after he came in the game was Frank Tachara's empty net goal. And then Stefanos Lakers, who is coming off of the goalie of the week, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to him. But I feel like the fact that it worked for them momentum-wise, they played better once Brodeur came in. Nothing against Lakers. Lakers is one of the best goalies in the league, like I said, but sometimes when you do that momentum tie goaltender change thing, you should just stick with the guy the next day if it worked, in my opinion. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. But we'll have to see what happens going forward. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.